What's up guys, today I'm taking you along with me as I go fishing, I'm gonna actually catch some fish, let's have some fun today. But along the way, I'm gonna explain to you how the real estate market works, hopefully correct a lot of the problems that you guys have. And behind me, we have a, a little pond, I was gonna say lake, I should be out on the lake. If you guys are true fishermen, normally here in Dallas, I go out to Lake Fork. This time of year, you can see I'm clearly sweating, it's super hot out. We're throwing deep dive crankbaits out there in the deep water. The real fishermen understand that. But today we're gonna be catching probably some small bass, some perch, and there's catfish in this lake as well pond I guess you could say so what I want to point out today is kind of how the real estate market works what you are probably doing incorrectly and the first thing is how to understand your market and pick where you want to market a lot of people start out in the business and they get overwhelmed because they look at this lake as their entire market <clears throat> this could be like the entire Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex think of flying over a helicopter looking at this lake there are better places to put your time energy and resources than others so I'm gonna talk about this right now and then we're gonna go on and catch some fish I'm gonna teach you some valuable lessons now guys, the first thing is you need to understand your market. Ask yourself, are you a little bit overwhelmed right now? Look at the size of this marketplace that we're looking at if you want to think of it that way. There's all sorts of fish living in here, but there's better places in this pond than others to go fishing. And if you waste your time and energy fishing in the wrong place, there's an opportunity cost of this as if you spent your time and energy in another place, right? So the first thing you need to understand is winging it is not a business strategy. You need to make sure that you're investing your time in the correct place, so you need to study your market and the first thing is to decide what type of fish or what type of house or deal do you want to go after. Now, I probably should have picked a different time of the day to do this. It's freaking hot out here. But um, I know how overwhelming it can be when you only have X amount of money to spend marketing or X amount of time to go door knocking or put out bandit signs or do whatever you're doing. And you look out in the marketplace, you're driving down the highway, you're going all around, and you're seeing houses everywhere. And it seems to be so overwhelming, right? You need to pick a certain area. So think of this as first off, deciding what type of deal you wanna go after. Commercial, land, rental property, flips, house flips, wholesale deals, right? So think of that as a lake in your market. Different parts of this little pond here are gonna have different types of structure. There's a fountain out here, right? Let's see if we can get it. So what this does in this area is it creates aeration, so a lot of fish are out there. There's trees that overhang with trees and water, which is where fish are gonna be more likely to be. So in this lake, there are three types of fish. There are bass, there are catfish, and there's a traditional perch or crappie or whatever you want to call it. Different types of perch in here. There's blue, uh, there's bluegill and then the little yellow ones, whatever. They're all different types of species, but they're all similar, right? So once you identify, let's say you decide that over here, this area, this neighborhood where the trees are in the water, which is going to attract the fish, has the best cash flow in relationship to taxes and sales price that you can buy in your marketplace. That is where you want to concentrate your efforts to go fishing for rental properties. What if you decide this, this fountain over here has the nicest properties with the highest appreciation area, uh, which means that if you buy it and you're going to flip it, you have the highest opportunity to have it go up in price while you're flipping it. Also, the higher price points have bigger spreads when you're flipping houses. So think of what type of fish you want to catch. And then the next thing is decide how you're going to catch them. What type of lure are you going to use? Sometimes that lure can catch more types of fish than one. For example, sometimes marking the same area, you could find a commercial deal and a wholesale deal. You could find a land deal and a wholesale deal. You could find a flip or a rental property, right? So think about what are you gonna do to market for deals? Cold calling, direct mail, um, bandit signs, door knocking, whatever it's gonna do, social media ads, Facebook ads, YouTube ads. So what we're gonna be using today, we're gonna be using mini crankbaits as well as a basic bobber and basic hook to catch brim, right? This is gonna be the easiest fish to catch. And I wanna talk about the different size of fish as we go through in relationship to your deals and how that's gonna fund your business. Now let's move on to the area that I picked as my designated marketing area to where I'm gonna spend my time catching fish today. All right guys, what I'm gonna show you here is a demonstration on marketing why I think a lot of you guys are failing. So over here on the left-hand side is a mini crankbait. I can catch a bass on this, I can catch a brim on this. I'm gonna demonstrate this here in a second. Plus, I'm gonna show you one of the biggest mistakes real estate investors make, which is not understanding drip or repetition marketing. Now over here, this is a bobber and a piece of ham. This is gonna represent a reactive type of lead versus a proactive. Now, what's the difference? One is a very limited time in front of the consumer. The other one is there 24 seven. Think about a video, YouTube marketing, which is what you're watching me on right now. Think about a billboard. Think about something that's in front of the consumer over and over and over that attracts them. It's working while you can't be working. And think about this is what you're doing possibly right now, which is why it's not working. Not to say it won't, but I'm gonna show you that's gonna take a little bit more effort. So right here, we're on a deck. We're under a tree, and I know that there's a big tree limb that's falling out here, which I know, after studying my market and doing my market research, right here is where there's going to be a lot of fish. 
So I'm gonna show you two different ways to catch these and make a point while I'm doing this. And I'll show you right now. Okay guys, the first thing I wanna show you is what most of you guys are doing. This should be a proactive strategy, something that you do once, you get a small time in front of a potential consumer, once that goes away, you can't market to them anymore, and you've already paid for that marketing, and that's an expense that you don't get back. So I'm gonna throw it out in this direction right here, and I'm gonna continue throwing it out over and over and over until I catch fish. And if I don't catch one on the first cast, what I'm gonna show you is what happens to a lot of you guys who give up and you don't do what you just did again and again until it works. I'm gonna start passing here, and hopefully uh, I can make a point. That's where people give up. They make one touch of marketing and they stop trying to catch fish. Guys, it's been a number of casts. We haven't caught anything yet. And this is why most entrepreneurs fail because they don't continue on marketing. But then they continue on casting into the same area until this works. Just to show you that this is how business actually is. See that? Out of nowhere. I'm about to give up. Kind of good uh, example on how business is. Right when you think you're about to give up is when you get that deal. See how tiny he is though? This is going to be a typical deal in the market, which I want to talk about as I catch a few more fish. I'm going to show you the average size of them. But you can see how many casts it actually took. Doesn't mean since the first five or seven or eight casts didn't work, we keep on marketing these same areas because the fish are there. The deals are in the market you're going after. You're just not uh, doing it enough. And you're giving up too soon. I'll let this slow guy go. Let's see if we can catch another one. Okay guys, now you know I talk about reactive marketing over and over. Primarily YouTube and video marketing, other strategies. And consistent marketing strategy, once you put it out, it's there and it works for you. You don't have to touch it, you set it and forget it. I'm gonna throw this same uh, uh, bobber and piece of ham into the same area we're throwing the lure into, but it's gonna sit, it's gonna attract fish to it. And when you understand the difference between proactive and reactive marketing, your income's gonna go up. I'm gonna throw it right out here in the sun. how that works. You just throw it out there and you let it sit and they come to it and it's working for you while it just sits there instead of having to actively go out there and do this over and over. Just a little guy but that's the main type of deal you're going to catch. <laughs> this one's actually uh, a little bit bigger. So that's kind of how your deals are going to come in. They're going to come in different sizes which is important because a lot of people don't realize that sometimes they get a big deal and they start thinking that that's how they're all going to be. Uh, what I want to point out is, once again, I caught this on a bobber and a piece of ham, which is a reactive strategy, which is where we're catching most of our fish today, which is important to point out. This is uh, about middle size of what they get in here. So when you're out there marketing, you're going to get mostly little fish, then you're going to get some mid-sized fish, but you're trying to catch the big fish. Now, what most people understand is, all these little fish, all these little deals throughout the year, the way you should look at this is a washout of your cost to run your business. So a lot of people think if they do lots of little deals, they're going to make a lot of money. That's usually not how it works. Usually you do a lot of little deals to cover your costs for your business and your profits paid off two or three, or depending on how much marketing you do and how big your business is, a few of the bigger deals. So these little deals are important. They're like base hits. And then the big ones, two, three run home runs are what does it, right? So I'm going to keep throwing these out there. I'm going to catch a few more and show you the different sizes just to represent what it's like when you're actually at the marketplace. Okay, I got another one. Another little guy. Once again, once again, just trying to point out, catching lots of little ones, another one on the bobber. We'll see how many we catch today, but most of the fish that we're gonna catch are gonna be small ones. Oh, got away. At least it's back in water, right? But they're gonna come as small ones. We got a little tiny piece of bacon on here. Let's see if we can see if we catch one on a little piece. What's the important part to understand is that reactive marketing is out there longer. It takes less time to put it in place 
the proactive marketing, which is what a lot of people are doing, is the consistent time, uh, overwhelming amount of time that you're constantly going in and out, and it's inconsistent. Where if you get a good reactive marketing plan in a good area that you research, you're gonna have consistent deals coming in, you're gonna catch a wide range of fish or deals, small to big, and you need to understand these small deals fund your big deals, which is actually where your income comes from. So clearly you guys can see it's hot out here in this Texas weather. Look what I do for you guys to make these videos. But um, what I really wanted to get across from you guys here is have a designated area where you're marketing and a reason why you're marketing there. If you're just winging it, winging it does not build a business. The second thing is pick the right bait. Make sure that you're using the right strategy and mostly reactive, if not all reactive strategies because it's less expensive and you have it working all the time. Right now while I'm filming this video, my other videos are bringing deals to me. Think about what you're doing right now. Is it active? How active is it? Or is it residual? Think about your flips versus your rental properties. Same thing with your marketing. The last thing is understand where your deals are coming from and how big they are. Most of your deals will be small and you're gonna have a few big ones. And if you do catch a big one, don't go crazy because I've seen a lot of people go out of business because they get used to thinking these deals are gonna come and they're always gonna get big deals. Count on small deals, be grateful for the big ones, Use the small deals to wash out your marketing costs. Be safe because right now you're seeing a lot of people go out of business because they're not smart with their marketing dollars because they don't understand that the majority of the deals that they're doing <clears throat> are small deals and not big deals. So understand the type of deal you're going for. Research your marketplace because you have limited resources and time and energy. Pick the right areas. Pick the right type of marketing. Primarily reactive. Leave it out there. Set it out there. Use those small deals to cycle back your marketing to get your big deals, which creates your income. Use those to create more income, pay taxes on it, create disposable income, and leverage that back into uh, buy and hold properties as assets to create equity and time and money freedom through residual income, guys. And that is how it's done. I hope you liked today's video and had a little bit of fun. I'm gonna go take a shower. You guys have a great day.